Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of the Work Well podcast. If you haven't already, check out our website, workwellpodcast.com, where you can stream or download all of our podcasts to date, as well as accessing show notes for each episode. My guest on the show today is David Gillick. David stepped off the track in 2013 after a successful athletics career which included Ireland's first sprint gold medal in 76 years when he won the 400 metres at the European Indoor Championships in 2005. He retained that title in 2009 and became an Olympian in 2008. Major goal for David was to compete in a global 400 metre final and in 2009 he achieved this when finishing sixth in the Berlin World Championships. He still holds the indoor and outdoor Irish 400 meter records. These days, David works in the areas of corporate wellness and media, as well as working with brands and organizations promoting a healthy lifestyle. Passionate about Irish sport and the voice of the athlete, David is a member of the Olympic Federation of Ireland's Athlete Commission, along with the High Performance Committee of Athletics Ireland and Sport Ireland's anti-doping committee. Let's get stuck into my conversation with David Gillick. With David, hello and welcome to the Work Well podcast. Hey Brian, how are you? Great, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, hanging in there. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, you, look, the, end, the way I look at it is you're in a crisis and you just got to get through as best you can. Um, like we're juggling a couple of kids that we're not literally juggling them, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna laugh out of it. But uh, no, look, you know, we've plenty going on. We're both working from home and with two kids, so you're just trying to find out kind of what way works best for you. And so you're still kind of trying to work full time. Your your wife as well, and with the two kids at home, how is that? How are you finding that? It's that's the real challenge, isn't it? It's it's that balance. Yeah, it is, and I'll be honest. I think like when. Like I say, like week one of lockdown was a little bit kind of, dare I say, a little bit exciting in a way because it was different. And you're kind of thinking, oh, you know, what's all this about? And you're, you're looking at the news and, you know, it's kind of the kids are at home and it's all just brand new. And then like week two, I was like, right, I'm going to use this time to upscale. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then the reality kind of hit was like, oh, my God, like, you know, who's going to look after the kids like how do we plan this and like yeah. charlotte my wife was working from home and we have a four-year-old and and olivia's only one and a half so all of that was just like hang on a second you know we can't do everything and i think we just kind of stripped it back and was like look you know the kids are a priority you know, we have to entertain them we have to feed them and then try and fit in work around it thankfully i work for myself so you know i i can kind of work hours around um you know the kids and family charlotte's a little bit more right structured um, so morning time, she'll get her work done. We'll flip and we'll flop, and we just you just have to find a way. But to be honest with you, I've kind of by this stage, it's like you know, um, just trying to get through the day. You know, really just look after the basics, and if I can get a bit of work done here and there, that's that's positive. But you know, at the end of the day, it is a it is a crisis, and you just got to try and find the best way to suit you. Very good, yeah, and yeah, I can see you're certainly spending or uh, create creating positive time with the with the children. And it looks like I saw on your Instagram earlier, you had some hurdles set up out the back and you had them running. I thought they might be more suited to the flat like yourself, but you're, you're doing a, setting up a, a Daryl O'Rourke style uh, course out the back garden. Yeah, like again, we're lucky enough. We have, uh, we have a decent garden and we've got green space around kind of where we're living. So we're just trying to maximize that. And again, with restrictions to like 2K and out of 5K, you know, we have that on our doorstep. So again, with the kids, like you're just trying to entertain them and even just get them out and burn a bit of energy. And uh, like my two just love little races. They love that kind of like running against mum and dad. So with the hurdles, things like that, anything to just, you know, entertain them and keep them um, occupied. And even if you get 10 minutes, you get 20 minutes out of it, you know, they'll get a little bit tired and then they might sit down for a little bit and you might be able to kind of do your own thing for a bit so yeah we're having good fun i have to admit like there is a positive of this and i was only saying to my wife charlotte like you know the quality time that we spent together as a as a family has been brilliant you know more than we've ever done in terms of holidays or anything over the last couple of years so you know i, I think it's important to kind of kind of remind yourself of the quality time that you, you're spending with, with the people that matter most 
I'm hearing lots of people saying that. All right, yeah, it really is a nice time to to spend with those that are that are closest to you, isn't it? And it really is kind of quality time to to appreciate that time and to reflect upon it. Yeah, I, I think that reflection piece is probably you know I have found when when this all kind of started, it was probably the first time that you know I down tools, the first time that I actually stopped and slowed down a little bit and. I think with that, like I began to reflect on some of the work that I was doing. What's the work that I enjoyed? What was the work that I didn't really enjoy? Um, and because I had time on my hands, I could kind of think about that. Whereas, you know, thankfully I've been busy over the last couple of years, even since I retired from athletics. So you kind of, it's almost getting on that treadmill and then suddenly it just, the years have just passed. So I think it's the first time that we've, we've actually just kind of like slowed down a little bit. Um, and even kind of from a, a mental health point of view, probably, been a little bit more physically and mentally present with the people around me and I think that's really really good so again there's positives in this obviously there's a lot of negativity and a lot of grief and loss out there but I think if you can kind of hang on to the little glimmers of positivity and you know be grateful to what you for what you have I think that can really give you a lift yeah yeah very well said and you, you mentioned the athletics career there you, you stepped off the track in in 2013 could you maybe bring us up to speed on, on what you've been up to since then and, and what, you're, what you're doing right now? Yeah, so like athletics was obviously a massive part of my life. Um, competed at all major championships and I suppose every goal, every, every, everything was built around that and every day, every week, every month, every year was all about chasing that goal and got to the point where I decided I was going to retire and, and, and move on with life and to be honest with you guys, struggled initially with that. There's a huge amount of change. Um, and I'd imagine a lot of people are going through change at the moment. And you find yourself kind of feeling very anxious, a bit overwhelmed, not really sure of what you want to do or, or, or what you, you're going to do. And all of those emotions kind of was something that really, um, to be honest, just stressed me out. And thankfully, I got help. And through that, I began to kind of understand a little bit more about myself, um, you know, what I wanted to do. And then also the little triggers that used to maybe unsettle me and, and deal with them. And as a result of that, I began to kind of, um, I suppose, follow the passions, the things that I'm interested in. And, and that's kind of, uh, you know, mental health, well-being, um, physical uh, well-being as well. And I suppose I'm lucky enough that I did a TV show, MasterChef, and that opened up opportunities in terms of kind of the food, something I was quite interested in. So all of those combined have... Um, I've given me huge opportunities and right now I'm doing an awful lot in, in the corporate world where I'm working along kind of well-being and um, helping companies in terms of kind of wellness programs and um, you know been part of panels been part of uh, keynotes and all webinars and things like that in terms of physical and mental well-being and of late I'm, uh, I'm moving a little bit more into the performance side of things as well which which is exciting because I can look back at my career and there's a lot of you know high performance um, areas that I was operating in and obviously delivered uh, in certain areas. So there's a lot of lessons there that now I'm kind of sharing. So it's not, it's not all about kind of David Gillick, the athlete of, of 20 years ago. It's very much, you know, real world now. What can I do now and how can I help other people? And I get a kick out of that, I'll be honest, I do. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy sharing experiences and getting people together to kind of, you know, share knowledge, expertise, and basically try and better yourself, but also your direct team or maybe the people that you're managing in your workplace. That's a great mix of skills and experience there, all right, that you're bringing together. Would, yeah. you, would you have any advice in, in the present moment for, for organizations that are looking to support colleagues at the moment that some of them, well, a lot of them will be working from home, and of course they're preparing them for a return to a workplace, whatever that might look like. Any any advice or suggestions uh, for those kind of companies? Yeah, like I think, you know, again, going back to change, um, there's a, probably a lot of people that are in an area of, of uncertainty. Um, maybe they've been like temporarily let go from the job. Maybe their roles might be a little bit different. Or maybe, you know, they, they, may, they may never go back into the office. They might actually work remotely full time and yep. you know again it's it's routine I, I really do think you know communication at this point is key I think keeping people uh, abreast of what's going on or what might happen um, and trying to give clear kind of guidelines of of what the company is doing for let's say phase one phase two phase three mm -hmm. you know because a lot of this is coming from the media and everyone's trying to interpret that well how does that affect me 
um, what's going to happen in my role, what's going to happen in my, my, my office, my workplace. And I think communication is, is vitally important at this moment of time. And, and that's probably coming from a top down. But I, I do think, um, you know, as, as in employees or as colleagues, picking up the phone and collaborating with the people around you because we're all quite used to having that social face-to-face -face interaction. And suddenly when you're outside of the office or you're working remotely, it could be actually an hour, it could be a day, it could be a week before you're, you're talking to a colleague, you know? Um, and I think it's kind of, you know, a lot of people are trying to juggle a lot of things. You know, it could be kids at home, it could be um, parents looking after someone. And I think sometimes we're, tr we, we're kind of, we're trying to keep that production um, and productivity rate really, really high. But it can be hard in, in the midst of a pandemic. So I think it's kind of like talking to the, the people that you trust in, ter in terms of your work and actually kind of saying, you know what, I'm kind of struggling a little bit here. I'm really struggling with time and I can't find a routine. And Because there will be somebody else that's going through that. And I think by mm -hmm. sharing it. So really simple things like, you know, webinars, um, team meetings virtually and get everyone to put on the camera. You know, get everyone to actually turn on the camera. Um, and not hide behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be even that simple thing of having a face-to-face -face and virtually seeing someone and just trying to have a bit of fun along the way. Like, I know a couple of companies have uh, set up quizzes and uh, things like that just to get people together. And I think that's vitally important. Another thing things that I've heard as well is um, the virtual step challenge. So again, these little kind of step challenges where people are going out and they're clocking their steps because the exercise is important. So trying to get people to get away from from their desk for a little bit, you know, because I think the danger when you're working at home is that, you know, you could go hours and hours and hours. You could skip lunch. You then maybe, okay, I'll work early in the morning. I'll play with the kids a little bit and then I'll work quite, you know, late into the evening. But then your whole routine, your sleep, you know, can be completely, you know, just turned upside down. And then that's having an effect on your own kind of uh, physical and mental well being. So I definitely think from an employee point of view is, you know, look at your direct team, try and get them together. Um, even if it's just for a quiz or something, you know, just to kind of bring them all together and have a, have a conversation and a chat. And that, that communication piece is really important, is it, isn't it, from the employer perspective? The, um, you know, the virtual cafes we're seeing and the, the quizzes, as you mentioned, really, really good ideas. And um, from the individual perspective, then, as you mentioned, the routine, incredibly important. And that, that's a good idea you, you, you had there. So the step challenge, the virtual step challenge, because... I think we, uh, there's quite a few people talking about the importance of exercise at this moment in time. But on top of that, it's, it's movement as well. You know, exercise can be pretty much a 30 minute exercise can be canceled out if you're sitting at your desk in a sedentary position for 12, 14 hours for the rest of that day. So uh, something like a virtual step challenge, you know, a bit of fun, healthy competition is something that can motivate, motivate people. Absolutely. And like maybe, you know, if, if companies are in a position to throw in um, an incentive, maybe it's a gift voucher, maybe it's, you know, just something that, um, that can entice people to get involved. And even like within, the, within your own team competing against another internal team, like that's always a great one, you know, and yeah. you're going to pitch and everyone loves a bit of competition, let's be mm -hmm. honest. But I think, you know, you mentioned a good, uh, a good point there about exercise and, and you know, movement. And again, it's trying to structure that into your day. And like from my experience, I'll be honest, over the last couple of weeks, um, there was times when, let's say, the kids might sleep in a little bit. Um, or sure, I'll just sleep in. I won't get out of bed. You know, and then before you know it, by the time you've got them up, dressed them, give them breakfast, it's into the morning. The morning's gone. So, you know, I kind of struggled with that. And I just kind of went back to the fact, right, I'm going to try and win the morning. That's my motto, is win the morning. If I can get up, a little bit earlier, say a half an hour or an hour before the kids get up. So to be honest with you, it's about six to half six. If I can get up around that, I can do something. 20 minutes, do a little bit of exercise outside or downstairs, whether it's a core workout or go for a run or go for a walk. And I just feel like I've won the morning. It gives me a bit of incentive um, and sets the tone. And I feel a lot more um, productive when I do that. So, you know, I kind of find for me, and this is just my experience, if I say to myself, right, I'll go for that run in the evening time. You know, suddenly that hour or half an hour I gave myself in the evening time, something starts chipping away at it. Be it somebody else or you need to do something. So I always find if you can get it done earlier, it's like your big rocks, get your big rocks done earlier in the day and it just gives you that incentive going forward. I love, I love that idea, uh, win the morning. I've, act, I've actually been taking advantage of the morning time you know, over the last probably eight weeks or so as well because my my daughter's been in a very poor sleep routine it has to be said 
and you know going to bed that a little bit later so getting up that little bit later as well so the one bit of quiet time that we've had or I've certainly had it has been an early in the morning time so I've been getting up early getting that exercise in and uh, maybe it's a walk maybe it's a run maybe it's a resistance workout or, or a combination and then coming back for for a coffee for a quiet time coffee and uh, and then the, the girls are kind of waking up then but uh, I like that idea I didn't know I was actually winning the morning but uh feel even more empowered now the fact that I've been winning the morning for the last eight weeks or so but it, look it's great what you say there Brian because I think it, you know you're you're talking about a bit of self-care and self-care is so broad like you know what I mean it could be an exercise it could be yoga it could be sitting down and having a coffee and reading the paper by yourself yeah. you know away from noise and I think you know I think it's important right now that people do kind of look after themselves because we're very much looking at other people maybe you have kids or, or, or elderly parents but you need to look after yourself a little bit as well and you know that can mean anything and when we talk about exercise you don't have to hit numbers you don't have to go out and smash a 5k in a certain time you can literally just go for a walk you know sometimes fresh air getting out in, in kind of a green space can just give you a bit of a lift and provide a bit of clarity as well you know what i mean because again we're all working we've all got things that we need to do and i'm sure people are trying to hit targets and you know maybe on the sales side of stuff it's, it's hard to to sell at the moment so you're looking at the numbers going oh my god in panic so sometimes you just need a bit of clarity and get away from it and i think it's vitally important and um, so i'd be a big advocate of like getting people just to if you can spend 10 minutes 20 minutes over the course of the day on yourself and just yourself and I think that's a real kind of good habit to get into it is yeah and to prioritize that to build that into your schedule that's mm -hmm. important isn't it well you're talking about schedules as well and kind of I think when you look at like resilience and things like that structure really helps you know and again if it's a if it's a day if it's a half a day if you could just allocate a bit of time you know for whether it's work whether it's the kids whether it's yourself and just put it like even just write it down and scribble it down in a couple of in a couple of lines and i think it just gives you a bit of a focus because again routines have changed so what we're used to is now kind of gone so if you had that commute where you might listen to a podcast on your way into work you know be it the lewis or in the car now that's all gone so when do you get that time and I think people maybe underestimated that that was their kind of switching on time or switching off time. Um, and I think it's important to be aware of that and go, well, when, when can I have a bit of time for myself? Or when can I catch up on that article or that podcast and, and try and fit it into your day? Very good. Yeah, yeah. Switching on, switching off time, or, you know, scheduling those nourishing activities mm. into your day, really important. Uh, so is that, so sp speaking of the exercise piece, is that, the morning time is that when you're kind of scheduling your own exercise in and, and what does that look like at the moment and we're still kind of we're coming out of restriction but we're still fairly restricted at the moment has that impacted your own routine it has right and i'll be honest with you I, when this all kicked off i i suppose um i couldn't go into corporates obviously for for obvious yeah. reasons so i had a little bit more time and i started running more right so i was going probably out every day and going for a run and then I hurt myself. <laughs> um, I twinged a calf, so I couldn't run. And then I was kind of going, well, what, what can I do? Um, and then, you know, lockdown was enforced. So, you know, you were really restricted in terms of kind of leaving the house. Mm -hmm. And about a year ago, I, I bought a trainer, a bike trainer. So basically you put the bike on a, an indoor trainer and it just means you can cycle indoors. And it sat in the, in, uh, in the house for a year, completely mm -hmm. and utterly untouched. And then I was like, right, you know what, David, you're going to get up on this thing and get going so i set that up probably about six weeks ago by this stage and because i couldn't run i hopped on that so i then signed up for the online program of zwift so it's a virtual racing platform so other people you know sign up for, and you can race against other people you can do training sessions and that has literally been what i've been doing over the last uh, couple of weeks so you know hopping on that getting 40 minutes or an hour in the morning time if i can and then in conjunction trying to do a bit of resistance training i've odds and ends of uh, old dumbbells and things like that knocking around so using those and bands and things like that that i can do in the comfort of my own house so out in the garden um or, or in a in the room downstairs and i'm just trying to kind of keep a bit of balance um and charlotte my wife now does a little bit of that as well so again it's just keeping things really simple so body weight exercises and i actually went for my first run um yesterday and as much as training indoors is all good and for me that was my my drug and kind of getting that um getting that sweat on and feeling good about myself 
you know, getting outside was amazing. I have to admit, like, just getting out and just running. And I wasn't analysing what I was doing. I wasn't, I was barely timing it. I just left the house, ran down to the little park, a couple of laps of that, uh, nice sunny day, and just the fresh air and kind of get, getting out of the house as well. So that cabin fever, you know, mm-hmm. um, was really, really important. And I think that's kind of what I've been doing over the last while. And um, it's helped, you know, really, really has. And I think clarity and just kind of, you know, focusing on something else for a little bit. So again, you know, exercising, there's, there's so many benefits of it. And for me, that's my kind of self-care in terms of physical and mental well-being. Very good, yeah. And especially getting out into nature and the fresh air, as you mentioned, that can, that can do wonders physically and mentally. Such a, such a positive experience, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, working remotely, you know, and been locked kind of in the house and we're not really used to that. And that's, no. that's the reality. We're, we're, we're very sociable people. We get up in the morning and we leave the house and we do this and we do that and we meet people. Now suddenly you can't do that. And again, like, I love my family to bits. I love my kids to bits. But sometimes, you know, when you're buried in the house, you know, day after day, like, as much as you love them, you're sometimes you're ready to, you know, I, I want out. Get me out of here. <laughs> like, you know, like that's that's just the reality. So, like, I don't want to sound like everything's perfect because I yeah. have days when it's just like, oh, will this thing ever end? <laughs> you know, and you're hanging on to what you know Veradkar says in a press conference, hoping that it'll all come back to normal. But yeah. what I do find, Brian, as well, it's probably the first time that we really can't find the answers. You know, yeah. we're so used to like getting answers and getting onto you know the laptop and the phone and finding out answers. Whereas this time we can't, we don't know, mm-hmm. and I think that's affecting a lot of people. Um, and there's a lot of people kind of at home alone. There's a lot mm-hmm. of loneliness out there. There's a lot of grief, and I mean grief in terms of loss. You know, maybe you have lost uh, a loved one to coronavirus, or maybe mm-hmm. you've just lost your routine, your social element, meeting up with friends. The fact that maybe you had a goal, but it was a holiday, or maybe it was something exercise related, and now that's all gone. Mm-hmm. So I think we all kind of go through um, the grief cycle at different points, mm-hmm. and um, regardless of what you've actually lost, it could have been, like I said, bereavement, or it could have been just a routine. And I think that affects uh, a lot of people in different ways. Yeah, and because there's great fear in uncertainty, isn't there? So, and there's so much uncertainty at the moment, as as you said, the the future is quite unclear. We're still we have a phased reintroduction, but it's, it's still not that clear exactly when we're going to get back to normality and if we ever will get back to that kind of normality and what, what it might look like when we do get back to, to work or, or to or what, what used to be our old routines. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when you look at, say, the grief cycle, like you will hit the acceptance uh, point at some point you know and again that will be different for different people but you know trying to kind of maybe get your head around the world we live in now and accept that you know this is now this is today this is what i need to do today and i think the danger is we kind of we look to that like july or we look to august or we look to september or we look to even next year and we, we kind of hope oh everything will be back to normal and then you kind of might pine for the way it was three or four months ago you know that was my normal and what we're doing there is we're we're not in the present we're not like looking after the little things we can do day to day. So I think that's vitally important is to try and strip it back to, okay, look, here's my purpose now. Okay, what, what are the gaps? What are the things that, you know, I need to work on and then try and action those and keep it short, keep it kind of day, two days. That's the way I'd approach it because the danger is if I start going, oh, July or August, everything will be back to normal. July and August might come around. Do you know what? It's not back to normal. So, yeah. you know, there's a fear in that. But I, I think it's just kind of stripping it back and keeping things really present. Mm-hmm. You, you certainly seem to be keeping active and, and productive. And I've noticed you, you mentioned that cycling challenge. I've, I've seen you do, take part in that a few times. There's also the, some cookery demonstrations online. And I think you're doing kind of Q&As for, for Park Run as well. So lots of stuff going on online. You're probably already active online. Was that kind of a natural or a seamless transition for you during this? If I'm honest, it was always kind of something that I thought about, you know, in terms of like, like this Zooms and virtual webinars and things like that. But, you know, it, there was no reason to switch to that or to try and yeah. do more of that because, you know, I was going into companies and I was giving talks and things like that. So just continue doing what I was doing. Um, and then all of a sudden, like everyone is now uh, a whiz on IT and virtual hangouts and all this sort of crack. So, you know, from a from a positive point of view, it's been great. You know, it's um, it's amazing that when you kind of throw yourself into something, 
like you know you come out the other side and I'm looking at you here with your very nice work well podcast backdrop you know <laughs> you're getting my headboard here behind me you know I'm so, just hiding the I'm just hiding the laundry behind me here <laughs> and that you know I think it's people learn and people adapt and I think that's a great thing and people are resilient people have you know we can move left and right you know when we have to um I think sometimes you, you just get very comfortable to, to be in your own lane and the white lines running left and right, I'll just keep going straight. And I think the important thing is that, you know, when adversity strikes, you know, it's amazing how resilient you can be and how adaptable. And I think that's what I have found. And even, you know, yes, on certain social media platforms, I'd, I'd be active, but, you know, I, it's not something that I, I would try to do every single day. I kind of have a, have a bit of a love hate relationship with social media. Um, and for me, I, I need to manage that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right now, it's where a lot of people are looking for content. It's where they're looking for entertainment, um, inspiration, motivation. And, you know, I'm just fortunate that I, I have a few things that I can share, um, whether it's exercise or whether it's food. But, you know, I, I've been lucky enough that there's opportunities out there with some of the, the brands that I, I, I work with. Um, and it's just trying to kind of use those right now as well. At the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to, I suppose, run a little business. I'm trying to provide for my family. So you have to look at it from um, a financial point of view and, um, you know, do what you can in, in, in a pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the love-hate part, is it the hate, is it because of all the, maybe the fake news? Is it the kind of fact that it can be all consuming social media at times? Yeah, I think so. And again, you know, for me, and I'll be open and honest, I probably fall into that area of um, comparing myself with a lot of other people. So, you know, you might go on, you might see someone, and again, like LinkedIn and things like this, you might see someone that's really productive and, and putting up things and you're thinking, why am I doing that? Or, you know, why didn't I do that course? Or, you know, why didn't I think of that? And likewise, social media, you kind of jump on that and you, you assume that what people are posting is reality and you assume that, you know, their world is perfect and I think you can instantly kind of look at yourself and go, am I doing enough? And particularly, again, with kids, like, you know, right now there's parents out there trying to school kids at home, keep them entertained, look after themselves. And people will post things and you think, oh God, why didn't I think of that? Or am I doing enough with my kids? And, yeah. and then you start reflecting on yourself thinking, am I a bad parent? You know, God, like, <laughs> how do they do that? How do they juggle things? How do they manage things? But, and that's where I think you just need to be aware. And what I have found with social media is like, I try and cut out the negativity on it, you know, and I'll try and kind of, even with, when it, with news and stuff, I'll try and minimize the amount uh, of time that I'll uh, absorb all news because generally news can be a little bit more negative. Um, and even there's people on social media that can be negative. So I just try and kind of reduce that and, and reduce time on it, which is difficult when you're stuck in the house, you know, because before you know it, like there's been times myself and Charlotte would be sitting down the evening time after putting the kids to bed and we'll have a cup of tea. And then I'm looking at her, she's looking at me and we're just stro scrolling on the phone, you know? So, <laughs> Again, like th this is reality, and I think you just create that awareness um, around the amount of time you're spending on these kind of platforms, and just try and be in the present. I think is is the key thing. Yeah, and we we actually had uh, Dr. Coleman Nocter on the podcast recently, and he he kind of spoke about that specifically. The you know, you not to be comparing yourself if you're a parent, not to be comparing yourself to other parents on on social media, like as in, you know, the, the person who's got this six hours of Latin in before lunch, homeschooling while managed to, managing to juggle a you know, full-time job on, on top of that. So yeah, it, like it used to, it's funny, it used to be the, uh, you know, uh, exercise and body types and beautiful meals people were cooking up on Instagram and kind of now it's the, how many hours of homeschooling you're, you're getting in. It's kind of, it's, it's flipped a little, but it's still, it's that comparison piece, isn't it? It is, yeah. And she's like, I think it was banana bread at the start of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Everyone was making banana bread. And then, oh, I better give this a go. And, <laughs> you know, uh, the home workouts. And, like, the thing about it is there's so much information out there. So much. And it can be very easy to get sucked into that. And before you know it, you're, like, you spend an hour trying to find a perfect workout or the perfect recipe. And I think it's just, like, just, and I'm not saying cut it out. Like, there's a lot of benefits for social media. Don't get me wrong. But I just think, you know, you've got to, you've got to really kind of ask yourself, well, how is this impacting me and my own kind of thought process and self-talk? Because if it's any way negative, well, then it's not, it's, it's not having the, the positive impact uh, on your mental health and physical well-being. So it's just an awareness piece, I think. Hmm. You mentioned the perfect workout there, which, of course, we know doesn't exist. But let's, 
how about a more a realistic workout uh, for people that are kind of stuck at home? Uh, any suggestions there for someone? Maybe they're starting out or they're, they're struggling a bit for motivation, maybe to get started on some kind of an exercise routine. Any advice for, for those people? Yeah, like I think a question like that, you know, is so broad because we're all mm. at different kind of levels. But yeah. I think there's a lot of people that maybe have fallen into the category now where, you know, there was a huge social element to it. So, for example, you might meet a group or a friend and go for a walk or go for a run or go to the gym with someone. Um, and now that you can't do that, it's very easy to go, oh, you know, I just won't do anything. So I, I think what I would say to people is just look at your week. Look at your week and kind of go, okay, well, like, what are my busy days or when do I have meetings or when do I have kids? And, and then try and kind of balance that with, you know what, I can fit it in here on a Tuesday or Thursday and maybe once over the weekend. I think the danger is people kind of try and do too much too soon. Start small and then build. And I think, I mean by starting small could be just going for a walk. You know, maybe it's listening to a podcast, going for a walk, bringing the dog for for a walk, whatever it is. I think that's a starting point. And then like, you know, if you're a little bit more advanced, yeah, well then put in a few kind of like little targets, little goals. So maybe it could be time-based or, or uh, distance-based. Um, you know, if you know where you live, maybe there's a loop that you can do and kind of challenge yourself on that to a point, oh, I did it in five minutes, now can I do it in four and a half or whatever it is. Just give yourself little goals, but change it up. You know, my, my key thing is like, add a bit of variety. So let's say if running is your thing, you know, going for your runs over the course of the week is great, but try and factor in maybe a bit of bodyweight exercises in there. You know, so if you're someone who is looking at that resistance or maybe you want to tone a little bit more, bodyweight exercises are fantastic. So in the garden or on the balcony or in the living room, you know, just bodyweight. So squats, lunges, things like that, dips, stuff that you can do yourself that require no uh, equipment and no cost really, you know. Yeah. Um, they be kind of some of the key pointers. So variety is absolutely important. Um, and then try and do, maybe there is a social element to it. Maybe you can do a Zoom with a friend or maybe you can challenge a friend. You know what, I went for my 5K run. What did you do, you know? And uh, things like that between friends and, and family members can be great. And also what I would say with kids as well, I think like, and this is just my own experience, but I think kids love to be involved. So whether it's a case of with a football or, or throwing a ball into a, hot or something like that you know kids love that engagement piece and even kind of you mentioned at the start like with the little hurdles in the garden yeah like we spent probably about 10 minutes and it was only 10 minutes but it was a great 10 minutes and we were running over the hurdles having races you know oscar's beating mammy he's beating daddy and it's just fun but we're all outside and we're all moving and i think that's that's the key thing with all of this so my advice is the key thing is probably from the more mental side is put it into your diary Put it in, what day uh, you're going to do it, what time you're going to do it. And the hardest part is putting on the runners or putting on the training kit. Once it's on, so you might as well go then. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, great, great advice there. Yeah, don't overthink it. Just get out and do something. And I, I like the fact that you've, you've kind of touched on the start small and build up. Mm. And you're, you're kind of emphasizing a bit of cardio. And don't forget the resistance piece as well. Because as, as we mentioned, there's great... There is great fear and uncertainty, but hopefully there can be a little bit of comfort in the certainty that the, you know, the, the exercise guidelines for healthy adults haven't changed and we should all be aiming for at least a little bit of cardio and a little bit of resistance throughout our week. Yeah, absolutely. The variety is key. And actually, I heard Sonia Sullivan speaking recently and um, you know, here's someone who turned 50 this year, obviously one of Ireland's greatest athletes, um, who's still running and still very active. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, the big takeaway was that some days she just said she just, she just likes to run. She doesn't yeah. look at the watch. She doesn't try and calculate times or splits. She just goes out and runs. And some days she runs slow. Some days she runs fast. And she just enjoys it. And I think we can all adhere to a little bit of that. We don't have to analyze everything we do. Just get out of the house or the apartment, wherever you live, and get a bit of fresh air. Um, and I think it does the world of good. Fantastic advice. Yeah, just enjoy it. So nice, easy question then to, to, to wrap up, David. What does, what does the future look like then for yourself in these uncertain times? Has this experience, will this have changed kind of the work that you're doing in the future, do you think? Impossible to predict, I know, but I imagine there'll be, there'll be a lot of learnings and a lot of positives that come out of this. Yeah, there will, there will be. Like, it's inevitable there will be. And I think how we do business now, and particularly in the area of kind of like wellness and going into companies and, and, and sharing stories and running programs and all this sort of stuff, that will change for obvious reasons. Um, 
But I think we can all adhere to it. It's amazing to see what we can do virtually. Um, and I think for me, it's, uh, it's just highlighted, say, in terms of my offerings, what, what can I do? Um, but also, I think it's really, really, and I know you know about this as well, because I was on one of your uh, webinars and they talked about, you know, the importance of mental health. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's sometimes, a, like mental health did come to the fore over the last couple of years, and there's a lot more companies kind of looking into how they can, they can support their employees and run programs. But I think, you know what, it's now at the forefront of a lot of companies. You know, how do we look after our employees who are now working remotely? How do we manage that? So even from like a cultural point of view, a performance point of view, uh, a managerial point of view, how do you look after someone who might be 200 kilometers away? You know, how do we make sure that they're well supported? So I think in terms of um, the way we do business and the way we look after our staff and our employees, um, it will change, but it will change for the, for the better. I definitely think it will. And I think it's really given the whole area about um, um, employee well-being a real boost in terms of um, just looking after the, the, like the people in your own team. Um, so again, I'm, I'm kind of looking at, you know, harnessing that. I'm trying to be in a place where I can add value to companies, add value to, to people, individuals. Um, and that's, uh, that's an opportunity. So again, you got to look at it from a, a point of view that there is opportunities out there. There is indeed. And you're, you're absolutely right about the, the increased focus and awareness from employers on the importance of their people and the well-being of their people uh, going forward. Uh, that webinar I, I ran recently, it had 500 attendees and 90% uh, of them felt that well-being had moved up the priority list as a result of COVID-19. So it will be very interesting to see how things kind of settle down. But I, <clears throat> I agree with you 100% that it's, there will be more of a focus and more of a priority given to it. So a uh, really positive uh, sign for the future. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the great thing is that People aren't looking at days or weeks now. It's an ongoing thing. It's 12 months of the year. How can we support people uh, on an ongoing basis? And I think that's really, really important because we all have our days, you know, you can have, and again, it goes back to, you might have a busy month, you might have a quiet month, but you know, we all have our ups and downs and it's great to, to have that support over the course of a year. Brilliant, David. Listen, you've been really generous with your time. Where can people go to find out more about you? Uh, social media. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, now I'm on, on social media platforms and um, one of the things I'm trying to do now is uh, uh, redevelop my website. So, you know, a bit of information there, a bit of a blog and kind of sharing tips and a little bit more about my offering as well. So um, that's it. We're also kind of on Instagram and stuff like that, doing kind of live Q&As throughout the, the, um, the pandemic, coronavirus and stuff. So, um, yeah, just, uh, I suppose, Google me and uh, hopefully mm -hmm. I'll pop up somewhere. <laughs> Fantastic. And we'll be sure to uh, include the links to your social media and any other links in the show notes for this episode. Appreciate that, Brian. And uh, well done on all the work you're doing as well. It's brilliant. Thanks a million, David. Listen, take care, stay safe, and we'll chat with you soon. You too. Take it easy. Bye-bye.